So today I'm going to give you all of the information you possibly can want to know about pursuing a post -bac program before going into medical school. Everything from what is a post -bac program, how my experience was in my post -bac program, the grades that I got, how I think it helped me get into medical school, and then also some considerations that you should take into account if you're thinking of pursuing a post -bac program. So for those of you who don't know, my name is Monica and I'm an incoming medical student this fall. I make videos all about the pre-med process, med school, studying for the MCAT, lifestyle, productivity, so if that's something you're interested in, make sure you subscribe to this channel. Without further ado, let's just hop right into the video. Okay, so starting off with kind of what is a post-baccalaureate program. So I'm reading off of the AMC website, but basically a post-baccalaureate program describes a program that you complete after your undergraduate studies and it's designed specifically to support your transition into medical school. So a post-baccalaureate program is something that helps you enhance your application to medical school. So traditionally, there are two different kinds of post -bac programs. One is for people who might not have done as well in their academics during their undergraduate years. So they want to take some upper level science courses to really beef up their application. The second kind of post -bac program is for career changers. And these are people who maybe have never taken any sort of science courses or any of their core pre-med requirements in their undergraduate years. So rather than having to kind of redo their undergraduate years, they just basically have to take those core pre-med requirements that they need to get into medical school. And a post -bac program will allow you to do that. So those are the two kinds of considerations that you should take into account when you're thinking about a post -bac program. You know, if you're a true career changer, you wanna pursue a post -bac program that allows you to take things like organic chemistry, physics, biochem, um, biochemistry, you know, the general pre-med requirement. Or if you're someone who's already done their undergraduate pre-med requirement, you wanna take a post -bac program that allows you to take um, courses such as anatomy, um, histology, biochem, you know, or upper level biochem, things like that. Okay, so now I'm gonna talk a little bit about my experience um, in my post -bac program. So I did a one year certificate program and I was looking for um, a post -bac program. I wanted a program that would allow me to take upper level rigorous science courses of two reasons. One, because I had been out of school for about two years at that point. And so I wanted to do something that would get me back into academics and be able to show that I could handle the academic rigor. And the second reason was because I'd already taken all of my pre-med requirements in undergrad. I looked at all the programs in state because I did want to stay in the area and I looked at the curriculum. So I looked at what courses they were offering um, and how it was spread out and how much flexibility you had in terms of the courses that you could pick. And I was a little caught between either doing a DIY post-bac, which is where you pick and choose upper level science courses that you can either take at your local community college or your state college, or doing like a formal program where you get a certificate or a degree at the end. Um, but I ended up getting into the one program that I applied to what really sold me was that they had a linkage option. Now there are a few post -bac programs that offer linkage. Linkages really differ as well. So what a linkage is, is where a post -bac program would have some sort of agreement with the associated medical school at the same kind of university. And it would either mean getting a interview or in some cases you even get an acceptance. I didn't really look into the programs that would give me an acceptance. There aren't that many of them, um, and I believe they were out of state, and that wasn't just something that I was interested in. But for my particular program, I was offered a guaranteed interview, granted that I would meet certain requirements, so their GPA and their MCAT requirements, and that would allow me to get a guaranteed interview. Oh, and I was so determined to do well that I was like, I know that I'm gonna do well in this program because I wasn't really giving myself any other options. And that's really what kind of sold me on the program and what made me pick that versus the DIY post -bac that I was considering. So how did my post -bac program run? Here are the courses that I took in my post -bac program. So my fall semester, I took um, embryology, I took anatomy, uh, biochem, and graduate physiology. And then in my spring semester, I took three courses. One of them was an elective and I chose to do neuroanatomy, but you have a range of other electives to choose from. But the other classes that I took were biochem and um, histology. Now in terms of my schedule, um, when I was in my post -bac program, I'll insert a screenshot of my calendar and what it looked like on a typical week. Um, and it will show you what my lectures were and how I spent time outside of lectures, but it was rigorous. So as you can tell from my calendar, it was really challenging. I would not say that this was easy in any way, and I would definitely caution you to really think before you sign up for programs like this because 
they're challenging for a reason they really want to test you and they want to show that if you do well in this program you're going to do well in medical school and it's really kind of you know for their credibility as well that they structure programs that are very rigorous and very challenging um, so that they can show medical schools that their students can thrive in medical school and do well and one thing i would encourage you to do is that if you do sign up for programs such as these is to almost treat it like a test run of medical school um, i saw a lot of students where they were almost um, you know, in their head, their mentality was that I will kill myself to do well in this program and once I'm in medical school, life is going to be so much better and it's fine if like I don't have healthy practices in place, if I don't have good habits in place, if I'm not eating right, not exercising because I want to give everything to this program just to get into medical school. But I would almost ask you to kind of flip that narrative and instead challenge you to think about it as this is a test run for how the rest of my life is going to go because it's not really going to get any easier in medical school. So what are practices that I can put into play today that will serve me when I go into medical school and life really doesn't look that different or if anything gets even more stressful? So how do I establish good routines? How do I wake up early? How do I, you know, get enough sleep, get enough exercise, eat nutritious meals to build a system where I'm thriving and I have a life outside of kind of my academics and that's really how i approached my journey as well i made sure that i almost never stayed up past 11 pm i was so focused during my study sessions and i learned a lot of tools in order to increase my attention increase my memory increase my focus it made me change all of my study habits i had to learn how to learn i had to really kind of develop good routines and good habits in order to succeed and i learned so much information and i feel like i am so much more confident going into medical school because i did my post -bac program so from my perspective i would absolutely recommend a post -bac program for anyone who is in a similar boat as me or who thinks that they need an extra level of um, almost like a training before they go into medical school. It is absolutely not required in any way. I will never tell you to shell out a lot of money just to have like a training round. But for me, it was really good because I had, you know, not been in school for a very long time. I really did think that it made me a very competitive applicant because I did well in my program and because it taught me very, very important study skills and just allowed me to like remake my routines and habits so that they fit into my future career goals. The other thing I want to mention is the grades that I got in my program. And the reason I'm mentioning this is because one, I know that everyone's really interested in like what people get in their grades and stuff, but two, because I think that it played a significant role in allowing me to get into medical school, I want to be fully transparent with you. I want to show you that kind of this is what it took for me to get into medical school. I'm not saying it's true for everybody else, but just in the interest of kind of complete honesty and full disclosure, I do want to share that part of my application with you just so you have an idea of how I did and how that translated for me. Okay, so now let's talk about some considerations that I want you to take into account when you think about pursuing a post -bac program. So the first thing is, how will this impact my chances of getting into medical school? Now, this really depends on how you do in the program. Obviously, if you get a 4.0, if you build really good relationships with your professors, if you're getting good letters of recommendations, it's only going to help you you know not a lot of schools are going to look at that and be like oh i wonder what is wrong or like that seems like a red flag if you do well it's going to translate into increasing your competitiveness on the flip side and i mentioned this there are chances that you could do poorly in the program because they're so rigorous they're so challenging and they demand you to kind of work on another level that it's possible that you don't do as well and that could hurt your chances of getting into medical school because ultimately they want to see how you handle the rigor how you handle the academic so you really want to be very thoughtful when you apply to programs like these and be very self-aware um, when you're in these programs about how to structure your time and what you're kind of willing to give up what your weaknesses are and how much you're willing to work on them so bottom line these are not easy programs that you can just kind of get into and um, you know hope for good grades you really have to kind of make a firm commitment and decision and don't take those decisions lightly because 
it could end up hurting your chances of getting into medical school. The second thing is finances. Um, my program was not cheap in any way. Um, and again, in the interest of full disclosure, I'll tell you how much it was. It was about 30K for uh, two semesters or a year long program. And that's a lot of money, you know, that's a lot of loans. If you have to take out loans or if your family is kind of helping you pay for it, that's a lot of money to be investing into these programs. But I do think, again, if you do well, it is a sound investment and it will help you get to the next stage of your journey. And there are other programs that might be cheaper and there are definitely a lot of programs that are more expensive um, than my program. So just take that into account and finances are definitely a very big reason to possibly consider maybe a more DIY postback versus a formal postback. Another thing to consider is the whole linkage situation. So if you are looking for programs that will allow you to have maybe a guaranteed interview or a guaranteed acceptance, that's always really good because you're getting something very tangible at the end of it. And so that's really something to maybe take into consideration as well because you want to make sure that you are maximizing your chances and just increasing the probability of getting into school. The next thing to consider is the length of a program. So my program was a year-long program. These programs range from either one to three years and the length of the program can also kind of determine what degree that you get out of it, which was going to be the next thing that I talked about. But I think this is a good time to mention both. So in a lot of instances, what would happen is that if you do a two-year program, you also end up getting a master's. And that way, you know, say, I don't know, your plans for medical school change, you are still kind of pursuing something that will allow you to have more flexibility in the kinds of jobs you can pursue in the kind of career changes you can make if you don't want to pursue medical school or even if you do a master's i think can only help you get into the specialty of your choice or um, just show i guess your increased competitiveness for medical school so for me i chose to do a one-year program and i got a certificate at the end of it i did not get a degree um, and honestly that kind of worked out best for me because i really wasn't willing to shell out more money and do another year um, of schooling. Here are some additional questions that I would encourage you to ask yourself when you're considering pursuing a post program. One, how much time am I willing to devote to this? For my case, my program was a full-time job and you really can't work outside of that. I worked maybe like a few hours a week but nothing even close to a part-time job. So it really is a huge time commitment to be taken on and kind of saying no to other opportunities as well when you're pursuing such a rigorous academic program. Next thing is if they offer kind of any volunteering or clinical opportunity. So some schools will offer, um, you know, if they have a hospital associated with them, they would offer shadowing opportunities or scribing opportunities. So that's just something to, to ask about as well. The other thing I would encourage you to think about is MCAT prep. So I know my program offered a free Kaplan course along with all of the books for free. That was really great for a lot of students who kind of came in without having taken their MCAT because not only did the program prepare them for the MCAT, but also so taking a Kaplan course really prepared them as well. I know for me, I took the MCAT before I went into the program, so it was kind of a waste for me. And so that wasn't really like a selling point for me in particular, but I know for a lot of students, it really works out. And then the last thing that I'll encourage you to think about is whether or not you really need a post -bac program. You know, a lot of kids will maybe like try the first time around and they don't get into medical school. And so they think that the easiest way is to go into these academic enhancing programs. But in a lot of cases, that's not really where the weakness of their application was. It might have been in the lack of volunteering hours that they have or clinical hours that they have, or maybe their MCAT score wasn't the highest. So really be self-critical and analyze your application. And honestly, the best way to do that is to talk to admissions counselors and talk to people who have been successful in getting into medical school on objectively analyzing your application and telling you where you might have some weaknesses. So this is the end of the video. I hope this video was helpful for you. I know um, kind of making that decision about whether to put in the financial and time commitment of pursuing a post -bac program can be a really challenging thing to do and it's a challenging decision to make. So I hope this video kind of gave you some insight into my experience and helped you figure out whether a post -bac program would be the best decision for you. If you have any additional questions, just leave them in the comments below and I'm more than happy to answer. If you like this video as a whole, don't forget to give it a like and subscribe to this channel and follow me on Instagram. And I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.